Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to witness the Technicolor mystery that is the tone-generating circuitry of Sideman 5000. One of Sideman's central goals is to convince the human ear that it is producing real-life instrument sounds, and this is what we call sound synthesis. Now try saying that three times fast. Sound synthesis, sound synthesis, sound synthesis. Sound synthesis is the technique of generating sounds from scratch using electronics. Now, news flash people, Sideman isn't the only machine that synthesizes sound. Any of the bleep bloop sounds your computer or video games make all generate audio using this technique. And just like the guts of the tone generator, synthesizing sound can seem quite complicated. But what we have to keep in mind here is that the science behind sound synthesis is derived from how real life sounds are produced. As you know, sounds are waves of air that travel in different patterns with varying frequency and amplitude. And our human ears can make sense of a wide range of frequencies. For instance, these sounds are high in frequency, and this sound Klangerzeugung. is very low in level. The brains behind sound synthesis have applied math to the physics of sound, and once we've got numbers, we can engineer electronic models that allow us to manipulate waves of electrons so that they behave the same way as real-life sound waves do. Sound synthesis inside of Sideman starts right here. This is what we call our wide band noise oscillator. And as long as we have power coursing throughout Sideman, uh, this thing is constantly outputting uh, all the flows of current at different frequencies uh, that are required to create the different sounds uh, that Sideman makes. Now, if I stick my probe here, at the output of the oscillator, we can take a look at the oscilloscope and see all of these squiggling lines. And all of these squiggling lines are all the different flows of current uh, wiggling away at different frequencies. Now the rest of the circuit mainly consists of filters, which allow certain frequencies to pass and blocks other frequencies and routes to different parts of the circuitry. And uh, by doing this, uh, the tone generators can access the specific frequencies they require in order to create their unique sounds. Uh, now the filters are known as RC filters, and they consist of resistors and capacitors. And what these things do is that they control voltage over time. And by doing this, uh, they manipulate the flows of current in certain ways so that they behave similar to how uh, the the waves um, produced by the waves in the air produced by a specific instrument um, are moving through space. Be aware, these colorful stripes here aren't just for fashionable purposes. It's actually a color code that relates to the value of the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Now, over here, we have a capacitor. This is also a capacitor, and this shiny blue one is a capacitor as well. It's actually new because I had to replace one, an old one that was broken. Capacitors, otherwise known as caps, are passive components. And on the inside of these things, we've got two metal plates. Now, the flow of current goes in through one side, and over time, electrons build up and build up and build up on this one plate until it's totally overcrowded, and they have no other choice except for to jump ship and land on the other plate, uh, where they then get spit back out onto their path in the circuit. Now that the world of filtering has been somewhat demystified for you, I thought we would start to have a little bit more fun. And one of the most fun things you can do with a big old circuit like this is to patch it into the oscilloscope and really check out what the signals are up to at different parts of it. So, like before, we are on the output stage of the wideband noise oscillator and Daniel is going to help me out here. We're going to move over to the signal for clubs. Now, what you'll notice is that we're getting something very different here. We're getting, so what's happened is the filters have pretty much shaped um, the frequencies necessary to make the cloud sounds to emulate the way that clouds are heard in real space. So this is 
how the air, flows of air would um, be traveling if we were hearing real clouds in real life. So now, let's go to bass. Resistor 16. And good old bass drum. Very different squiggle. But I thought I would show you guys my most favorite part of this circuit. Now, bass and clouds are much more snappy sounds, but when we go over the super generator, something else happens. So I'm going to patch into Shimmer. Now, check it out. We have, so Shimmer Generator requires a bunch of different frequencies to um, be working at the same time. And the scope gives us a pretty good show for that. Whoa, check it out. I don't really care that much about the sounds of the Shimmer Generator. Yeah, but I think it's the prettiest one to visualize. 